Mr. President, congratulations on your new role. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we have gathered on today. I pay my respects to the elders, past, present, and emerging. I'm honored and humbled to be standing here today before my friends and family who are in the chamber today. Today, I stand before you, the daughter of visionary parents. I have been the first in my achievements here. I was the first woman to hold the ministerial advisory role in the Victorian government. I'm the first Indian-born MP to enter the Victorian parliament. I'm the first Indian-born Hindu to enter any parliament in Australia. Of course, I owe this honor first and foremost to the people of the Western Metropolitan Region. But I also owe it to my parents. My father, Virjibhai Vaghela, grew up in poverty. His mother died when he was about six years old. He began working as a shoe polisher at a very early age. He knew that if he wanted a better future, he must educate himself, and so he studied, and eventually he joined the Indian Air Force, and later became a lawyer. He was poor when my mother, Yamuna Ben Gohil, married him. They had five children, four daughters, and then a son. I'm the eldest. I was born and raised in a small town called Jamnagar in the state of Gujarat in India. I have yet to meet people who possess the quali qualities of intelligence, discipline, kindness, honesty, and generosity to the same degree as my parents. Their love and devotion to us, the children, was overwhelming. We were filled with ideas of self-belief, resilience, hard work, equality, justice, and the belief that we were worthy and we would achieve anything we put our minds to. Simply, their mantra was, nothing is impossible for us. They were united in the very strong progressive belief that educating their daughters would lead us to a life of independence and prosperity. Growing up, we daughters were never made to feel inferior because of our gender. We were allowed independence and freedom of self-expression. They sent us to private school and university despite facing financial hardships and for which they had to make many sacrifices in their life. My sister and I were sent to live in St. Xavier's Ladies Hostel in the capital city of Gujarat, Ahmedabad, where we stayed until we finished our undergraduate degree. I completed my Bachelor's of Science at St. Xavier's College, where I was first in a university in my subjects. I met a man named Dinesh Chauhan when I was doing my first year of Master's of Science degree. He proposed to me. I had stipulations that he would need to fulfill for me to consider his proposal. <laughs> one, of, one of my conditions was that he must let me continue my studies after marriage. And two, we would go overseas for my further studies, which was a childhood aspiration of mine. I never thought he would accept, but he did. And today, I can tell you that he fulfilled all my conditions and I have been married to him for 26 years. As I have been the beneficiary of the belief in gender equality, my heart fills with joy when I see that our cabinet is comprised of 50% women. As our population is 50% women, so must be our governance and our workforce. After marriage, I did complete my master's degree and had a daughter whom we named Aishwarya. My ambition to study overseas did not subside after becoming a wife or a mother. I came to Australia as an international student to study a Master's of Applied Science at RMIT in 1998. My husband, Dinesh Johan, also came with me on a spouse visa, and we left my daughter, aged three and a half, in the care of my parents. 
we thought that my further studies from a Western country would bring us more job opportunities in India, which will help us in providing a good education to my daughter. Initially, life in Australia was very difficult for us. My studies included full days in the laboratory from Monday to Friday and left me little time to do casual work as a waitress in the evenings. I could not find a job in my field as I was either overqualified or I didn't have a local experience. My husband worked odd hours as a taxi driver. Eventually, I got a casual job working evening or night shifts as a laboratory assistant at the Northern Hospital. This was followed by an opportunity to work as a medical scientist in the same hospital. Once I finished my studies, we decided to stay in Australia. I applied for my permanent residency in Australia. Soon after that, I landed a full-time